because I am making them for my kids, I like to make sure they all get the exact same amount because that's definitely a thing. Hi, I'm Genevieve Coe, Senior Editor at NYT Cooking, and today I'm going to show you how to make dumplings. We're going to make both savory and sweet dumplings to celebrate the Lunar New Year. We're making chili crisp savory dumplings, and those are meant to represent good fortune for the New Year because they look like little money pouches. And we're also going to make sweet dessert dumplings that are sticky rice dumplings filled with a black sesame peanut paste. And those symbolize unity and family. That's one of my favorite things to make every year with my daughters. And I first learned how to make the savory dumplings from my Gupal, who was our family matriarch and passed away this summer at the age of 101. So this is my way both of celebrating her life and of course of the lives of the generations to come. And I really want all of you to be able to make these at home. You can, of course, go ahead and go to the store and buy them. But actually, the only thing you need to make dumpling wrappers at home is flour. You can use chopsticks, you can use a fork or a spoon. You want to add the hot water in a slow, steady stream. When you add hot water, it actually is going to yield a much more tender dough. I love using chopsticks to stir. I just find it to be the perfect halfway point between a whisk and a wooden spoon. When everything is moistened and shreddy, we're going to finish bringing the dough together with our hands. So with a lot of like yeasted breads, you see or you've heard of maybe the window pane test where you're pulling the dough so that it stretches and you can see through it like a window pane. But that's not what you're getting here. It should feel a little tacky. Sort of like if you've left some Play-Doh out and it starts to dry out, it's sort of that feeling. So here we have our dough. I'm just going to sort of form it into a rough ball and it's just going to get a chance to relax and also to hydrate just a little more. So you can see my kitchen towel is pretty damp here. Really, you can fill a dumpling with anything. So when I was in high school, my gupo taught me how to make dumplings from scratch, wrappers and filling, and we then made a really classic pork and Napa cabbage and scallion filling. It's still one of my favorites. My older daughters now are both vegetarians, so I really wanted to make them dumplings that they would love and eat. So you want to get out as much water from the tofu as possible. When you're able to get out all that liquid, you're going to be able to get in more liquid, and we want the seasonings to also soak into the tofu. You basically want greens that are tender, but not so tender like baby spinach. Don't ever run your blade against your cutting board, otherwise you're going to dull it. So now we have all of our greens. So we're actually not just seasoning the greens, and we are doing that, but we're going to help get the moisture out so the salt can help draw out the water. And then we're just going to let it sit in the colander in this bowl. I want the crunch of the celery, so that is why we're going to add it at the very end. I think our greens are now ready to be squeezed out. I can see they're actually looking a little sweaty, which is a really gross way to describe them. I'm going to crush them. All oh, the liquid being left behind. I'm just gonna give it one more final squeeze before I transfer it. And what we're gonna do now with the tofu is we're gonna take these pieces and we're gonna crumble them and smash them into really fine bits. So whenever you are making dumpling filling, you need something to hold the filling together. Otherwise, it's gonna be really hard to assemble the dumplings. And ground meat is usually what plays that role. And if you've ever worked with ground meat, it's pretty sticky and, and shrimp, they're all really quite sticky. And the nice thing is tofu is as well. I know I said earlier I love using chopsticks to mix, but your hands are often your very best tools. We're gonna to add crunch. We're going to add our celery, and we're also going to now add seasoning. So chili crisp is this great condiment that's become really popular in the U.S. in recent years, but it's been huge in China for much, much longer. I always love more heat. The dumpling wrappers we made are just flour and water. There's no seasoning at all, so it actually is going to dampen 
the taste of the filling a little bit, so you want the filling to be really punchy. The filling's all ready to go. Now the dough has rested in the time that it took to make the filling, so we're ready to go ahead and make our dumplings. I'm gonna just start with a little bit of dough. And the pieces that I'm not working with, I'm keeping covered with a damp paper towel. So the most traditional way to do this is to go ahead and roll your dough into a snake. So it's usually about a one inch diameter snake, and then you wanna cut it into about one inch pieces. And you're gonna take one of these pieces, flatten it a bit. That makes it easier to roll later. Well, my favorite part of making dumplings is always the final like rolling and filling part. Ideally, the way you would do it is you would have a small dowel and you would roll it from the center out so that the edges of the dough end up thinner than the middle. Right now, this is what I've got. So this is what I'm working with. So once you have this beautiful round, you can take filling and put it in the center. Obviously, the less filling there is, the easier it is to roll. So you want to compact it a little bit in there. You're going to start by bringing the two edges together over and around the filling, pinching it in the middle, and then if you want, you can just pleat it flat, but I always like to give it a little crease. So I'm just creasing it on one side. And then at the end here, where you have this opening, you want to push those two sides up and go ahead and pinch that together. This is gonna give it a nice little foot to rest on. And we're gonna do the same on the other side. So pleating from the side and then pulling in this edge to create a little foot so that these can sit upright. You wanna give it a little pinch around the edges again just to make sure it's totally sealed shut. So there we go, there's your dumpling. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and make another one. This is a really satisfying process, I think, as part of the joy of making dumplings. It just feels so great to work with this dough, and it's really meditative to fold and pinch all the dough. The reality is that you might be making these alone, which I'm doing. It's just much easier to go ahead and roll out one big sheet of dough and then use a round cutter to cut them out. Add a little bit of oil to a cold pan because if you've ever added water to hot oil before, you know that it pops like crazy. Make sure the bottoms all have oil on them. You're gonna be able to hear the water start to evaporate and it's gonna go from a pretty crazy crackle in there like snap, crackle, pop. And once it becomes a pretty muted crackle, that's when you know that it's ready to have the lid taken off. Beautifully browned. And when you're ready to serve them, instead of serving them on the bottom side, you actually keep the crispy side up so that they stay nice and crunchy. Mmm. That's exactly how I like it. The filling here is so flavorful. It doesn't even need a dipping sauce, but of course, if you want to dip it in a mix of soy sauce or Chinese vinegar or sesame oil, or of course, more chili crisp, you totally should do that. That was too big a bite. So we are moving on to dessert dumplings. If you can find glutinous rice flour, you want to go with that. Add this water oil mixture gradually. It's gonna look like gravel for a while. So this is a ginger soup, and what you use to sweeten this soup is sugar, of course. And if you just have regular granulated sugar, that's totally fine. But I like to use this rock sugar, Chinese rock sugar, and they are a little less sweet than granulated, and they taste a little less refined. The ginger here is not only delicious, but it also is going to help cut the sweetness. The sugar is starting to dissolve, I'm gonna let it steep like the way you would let tea steep um, because that's just gonna give it such delicious flavor. This dough has rested a little bit and so I'm ready to start working with it. And glutinous rice flour dough is one of my favorites to work with. It feels amazing. It's so soft 
and it's just really fun for little kids to play with. This is actually a tradition that I started when my daughters were little. Maybe at the age of two or three, I started them having them make these dumplings with me. Just this dough by itself, simmered in the ginger syrup, is a really delicious treat. But what we're gonna do is we're actually going to fill it with a black sesame filling. Black sesame seeds are possibly my favorite favorite flavor for a lot of Chinese desserts. But I found that I love the combination of peanut butter with black sesame seeds. If you have a peanut allergy, you can totally use butter instead, and butter will act as a binder, or you can even use lard, which is the traditional binder with black sesame seeds. You can grind the seeds in a blender or food processor or even spice grinder, put it into a teaspoon, pop it out, roll it into a ball. And once you have all these filling balls rolled, you actually want to pop them into the freezer. It's actually going to make it much easier to work with the dough. What you want to do is take the dough and roll it into a sneak. Cut them into even pieces. Whoops. <laughs> you just roll it into a ball again, and you start to flatten it with your fingertips from the edges. You can see this sort of like belly in the center. And once you have it flattened out, you don't need a rolling pin at all, you just need your fingers. Put one of your dough, uh, your filling balls right in the middle on that belly and gather the, the dough up around it. And this can be pretty, you know, uneven. You're just gathering it up around it. It is about the circle and unity and all that, but it's okay if it's not like a perfect circle. Yeah, so growing up, most of my happiest New Year memories were certainly around the red envelopes, which is just when you get cash as a kid, which is nice. But it's always around the desserts too. You can just go ahead and drop them right into this soup. Drop them one at a time so that they don't stick together. And you just wanna keep them simmering and you'll see that first they're gonna to float to the surface and after they've floated, they're just gonna keep simmering until that glutinous rice flour is cooked through and the inside is nice and hot. This is just one of my favorite desserts. The black sesame is so nutty and tasty and it's just inside this tender, chewy, sweet rice dough and it's just one of the best ways to celebrate the new year. So happy new year to all of you.